started tickling Holly, which is always an uncomfortable situation for me, because I'm just like, I don't need to see this PDA. <laughs> so we started tickling Holly. I don't think, like, I don't think, like, our relationship is conveyable to, like, it's like, it's not like you PDA. No, like, me and Ross, like, it's not like PDA. He's just, like, being, like, crazy. Oh, PDA. Okay. And so he was tickling her, and she, she was like, no, no, no. Stop. How long I was so tired. But she, like, devolved very quickly into just going, No! 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 Like a ghost. I was just so tired. It was like you were a boo or something. Maybe I was a boo. I was no. just tired. And, and then Ross overworked. was like, Whoa. We what? are overworked and unpaid, so. It was really freaky. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm holy. I'm sorry. Well, I'm glad I disturbed you. I'm on that note. My horse is a little throat sore. Yeah, it sounds like it. My Jessica's been gallivanting across the state going my, to conventions. My sore is a little throat horse. Yeah. My throat is a so why little don't you, why sore don't you tell horse. Us, why don't you tell us where you went? Because I, I haven't even, like, you just got back today, so I haven't even heard any of these stories. I went to GamerX. It was amazing. Okay. The best part. Okay, here's the best part. The best part is I picked up this little pig because it reminded me of, like, the little pet pig you get in Monster Hunter. Yeah. Um, but they didn't actually sell this at the convention. The convention was at Hotel Kabuki in San Francisco. I thought it was going to be at the W. It was supposed to be at the W. No. And then the w it was wasn't like anymore. Space. I know. I was like, missed opportunity. Why yeah. isn't this in the Castro in San oh, yeah, Francisco? Oh, yeah, true. But it was in Japantown, and I had to take antibiotics for my, like, crazy arm. And um, the bad thing about antibiotics is they smell like poop and rotten eggs. They do. And so do. I made a mistake. Which one was it? Was it, like, there's, like, different names for them, like, different antibiotics. It's, like, names. Cetifeminol. Yeah. Anyway, it's like, a, it's, like, a powder in a capsule, like, a red capsule. I hit the I hit your file cabinet. Oh, I was like the ghosts are here. No, I just hit your file cabinet. <laughs> so it's it's uh, like a powder surrounded by a, like wax. Yes, wood yes. Thing, and it smells like sulfur. Oh, those ones are the giant ones too. Like, they're like right. the horse pills. And it smells like sulfur when I open it. I, every time I open it, if I'm in public, yeah. I like make sure to be like, I didn't fart. It's my <laughs> antibiotics. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Everyone there's like, girl. Farting in public. So I made the mistake of taking one of them without any oh, liquid no. because I was just like, okay, well, I don't have, and normally, you know, I take a lot of pills and, um, I take a lot of pills and sometimes I just have to swallow them and most of them are just like Tums. So they just, I just swallow them and it's not the best, but it's not terrible. Right, right. So I was just like, oh, I'll just dry swallow this as well. And I did and it got trapped oh my in my God. throat. And I was just like, it was burning and it tasted terrible because I couldn't swallow yeah, it that's very really fast. Bad. It like was because the wax, like plasticky outside, that's really bad. was like sticking. And then I like, I like hiccuped. Oh, and, God. Like, oh, no. Powder blew out of my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> At the airport. Sorry, you're like, Ugh. It was just like, just like, it was like, was someone like this woman's turning into one of the like Last of Us like undead clickers, like fucking like, like, like mushrooms start coming out of your head, and you smelled like farts. It smelled Perfect. like farts, and I was just Perfect. blowing out smoke in the middle of the airport. Oh god. So I learned my lesson, and I was in the middle of Little Japan Town, and. Uh, for the cosplay contest at GamerX, and I'll get back to that later. And I was like, fuck, I need to get something to drink. So I ran into this little, like, quickie mart in Little Japantown, 
And I was like, do you guys have anything to drink? And do you take credit card? And they were like, $5 minimum. So I found this, <laughs> like, at the cash register. And I got, like, my tea's tea. And I was like, how much is this? They were like, $1.50. And I was like, $1.50? So I still had to get more stuff. But I still was like, well, how is this it $1.50? Is... I don't, like, I don't know. It looks so, it looks, like, pretty fancy for $1.50. I know. It's really cute, right? Yeah. I can't imagine that being $1.50. So I got that, and I was like, this is perfect. It looks crazy. I'm just going to keep it next to us, in between yeah, us, for the whole thing. it is cute. So that's that. But I actually got you a present. Oh, boy. I, I, I haven't got, seen it yet. I got Ross a present, too. Ross doesn't deserve presents. I'm not. I'm not trying to be phallic, guys. Um, I got this for Ross. I own this print already, but I thought this could go on your game, like your retro gaming lab. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you told me about this one. It's the the uh, Muka yeah. style Samus. It's Samus and Peach and, and Princess, Zelda. Princess Zelda. Yeah. It's so really I cool. Bit, I thought Ross would like that. Yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah. It's really awesome. So I was like, that will go on their retro really gaming lounge. Yeah, that's really cute. Because yeah. Ross took over what he was did take it over cool room, and I was like, well... Well, it's still cool. It's just like it's, it's a, more like it's a present for Ross, but really, it's like a secret present for you. <laughs> and then I got I got you a present. I hope you like it. Oh my god! I show the fans before I show you. Okay. I can't see it. Oh, it's the villager. That's amazing. Did you Did you read it? Yeah, we just we just came we just came to the wrong village with an axe. This is so happy. I That's amazing. Looked, I thought it looked like Ross's character. Oh well. no, it does. It does. Thank you. You know I love Animal Crossing and I love murder references. So I know. It's really cute. I bought one for myself so we can match. That's awesome. And I bought yeah, one for Graham, but I didn't buy one for Ross because you said Ross never wears his T-shirts. Um, no, he would probably, would, oh, it's a lady small. I was like, he might steal this. Nope, it's a lady small. Ha <laughs> ha, Ross can't steal this. We like to share clothes. Um, we it, share clothes because he wears a men's small, so all of his t-shirts I can wear. So if I'm like, I don't have any clean shirts, I go through his shirts and... Yeah, they didn't have any men's smalls because it was Gamer X. <laughs> oh no, they are all gone. They were all gone. All the, like, skinny, attractive men bought all the men's but small But they shirts. had a ton of women's shirts. Wow, that's was, really cute. Though. I was Thank worried. You. That's really cute. I was like, "Oh, do you have?" And the poster is amazing too. Yeah, I was like, "Do you have?" Um, do you? You don't have women's sizes. And they were like, "No, no, we do. We actually have a lot of women's sizes." That's amazing. So I was like, oh yeah, I forgot where I was. Actually, there weren't that many women at Gamer X, but there were a lot of really hot men that were unavailable to me. <laughs> so I was telling someone that I felt like. It was like a water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink kind oh of scenario God. where I'm like stranded in the middle of the ocean and really dehydrated and I can't, I can't do anything about it. Well, you just look, you don't have to touch. Yeah. <laughs> um, attractiveness is not consent. No. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. But everyone was very handsome and it smelled nice. And everyone was really polite too. It Sounds like a of, really nice convention. It's kind of like, um, uh, if... The Swedish convention we went to met like Geek Girl Con, mm. like more men. And That'd be nice. They Sounds were fashionable nice. and like metrosexual. Yeah, and there were drag queens. There was a drag like, queen. I just want to say that every convention should have more drag queens. Like, yeah. I want drag queens at every convention because drag queens are funny, they're talented. They make you feel better because they're always like, girl, you're great. And I'm like, yeah, that's why RuPaul's Drag Race is, like, inspiring. Because not only is it a challenge, yeah, but it also, if, what is it? Um, if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anybody else or whatever? Actually, the cosplay contest was hosted by a drag queen. That's amazing. Her name's Acacia. She's on season one of RuPaul's Drag that's Race. Amazing. She had a lip sync for her life three times. <laughs> And then I, I think, like, apparently she was the, she was the, um, she wore a lot of really slutty clothes. And then in the, the... I should remember this because I, I for watched sure. all of them. And then in the last episode she was in, because she wanted to prove that she didn't just wear revealing clothes, she wore, like, a full ball gown. Mm -hmm. And then she, like, totally tripped and ate it. And then she was like, yeah, I should have just worn a slutty clothes. <laughs> and then I would still be on the show. But she hosted the costume contest, and she made 
a storm outfit in one day. Wow. I texted you a picture. Yeah, I saw it. It looked amazing. In one day. She was just like, oh, I just got, I just found out about this last minute, that's, so I had to put this that's, together that's in one day. Like, I, I don't know if this is, like, offensive to drag queens. I don't think it is. But I always feel like that cosplay has a lot in common with drag. Oh, I know. Like, I just think it has a lot, and I've always thought that, and that's why, like, I feel like when people are like, oh, well, you know, you only did this and this in your costume. I just want to be like, whatever, I have fun. And if we did it in two days, it looks good and we're having a good time and our makeup looks great. Don't be jealous of my boogie. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Acacia was amazing and she was, she had all these cue cards for things she was supposed to read. And she started out and she was like, hello, I'm Acacia, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, girl, my lashes are too long. I can't <laughs> read these cue cards, so we're just you, gonna skip all text, this. Just, I was gonna say, just I was, like, live text, texting. was texting me this because I was live like, texting this. Number show. one, like if you, if any of you guys cosplayers watching this have worn like big giant fake lashes, like Jessica's a pro wearing them, but like I can't see. I feel like that there's like bees on my eyes, and but they're just like huge bringing, ones. And yeah, but like, just little. I know, ones. but I, even that's what I mean. I can't even handle the little ones, so like I understand. I understand this dilemma. It was crazy. It was really funny. So she was dressed as Storm and um, she she kept like, she was like, where's Magneto and Wolverine for my threesome? And then someone would come. Oh, that would be a really awkward threesome. I know. Oh. Oh, I know. your metal powers have made Wolverine stab me through the crotch again. And then, um, like, whenever there was a Whenever there was like an awkward pause, like waiting for another contestant, she like started dancing and she like was twerking. like, she was like, no, she actually at one point she was like, someone came on stage and she was like, you get extra points if you can twerk it. Oh my God. And no one did. And I was like, damn it. What? No one did it? I would have done it in a second. In my armor, I would have like, I would have done it. I would have done it. Um, I would have done it for a drag queen, so for then sure. She, then she started dancing, like, because there was a pause between two contestants. And then the other contestant came on, and she was like, she was like, girl, I'm not done yet. You can wait. And then she started dancing on them. And they were so just, amazing. Like, standing. It was like, like someone dressed as, like, Shell or something oh from Portal. Please. Okay, if we ever, if we ever have Crab Con... Crab Cat Con. Crab Cat Con, which will happen one day, possibly in the future, maybe. Yeah. Perhaps. Uh, it will be hosted by a drag queen. Totally. We will judge it, and by judge, I mean, like, write down what arbitrary award you get that we make up on the spot, and yeah. it will be hosted by a drag queen. Yeah, she, at another point, she was, uh, there, this, um, cross, this crossplay Catwoman came up. And did like a backflip on stage, what? and she was like, she was like, oh no, you have entered my domain, and you are trying to show me up. <laughs> oh my gosh. She was like, ladies, this is my arch nemesis. You just get off the stage, and it was so. She was. That's so it was, amazing. It was so funny. She was like the best stand-up comedian I've ever seen, and she was in heels and giant lashes. Yeah. It was like. Insane. I was yeah. just like, I would like all those male comedians out there to just be able to improv and the shit out of this say, in giant lashes. I saw, I saw her costume, and it was like spandex, which means that like oh, that yeah. could not be comfortable for a man with like external. She did say that. She like was it like, cannot be comfortable. That is a whole other level of uncomfortableness that they also have to deal with. So the problem with, respect. The problem with the cosplay contest was it was outside in San Francisco. At ten o'clock in the morning. Oh God! So ten o'clock in the morning. So it was misty because the fog was rolling in. What is this like breakfast in. cosplay? Yeah. No, no. Yeah, actually, they were supposed to have another drag queen, but um, the other one was like, "I am not getting out of bed until one p.m." <laughs> she was like, "This doesn't happen." And so wow. then Acacia, Morning drag. then Acacia was like, "Talk." She was like, "She was like, all y'all being super complainers." I'm doing this, and my junk is taped down, so I'm <laughs> mad. And I was yeah. like, she, she was like, I'm mad. And I was like, she didn't say mad, did she? A little bit. What? I think she That's did. my word. Anyway, then in the middle of the cosplay contest, she, um, she, like, interrupted one of the contestants who was, like, doing, like, a Pokemon thing, and she was like, 
She was like, hey there, it's Jessica. Why aren't you doing this? And I was like, I don't I don't know. I don't want to make a big deal. Oh my God. Like, I'm not a judge on this. I'm just sitting in the audience because David Gator, my coworker, is a judge. And I'm just giving him like knowing like nods at people that I thought were good. And she was like, she was like, we're going to get drunk later. And I was like, yeah. It I was really amazing. hope that that happens, it, please. She's Facebook friend with oh me already, God. and I was like, please, we're gonna have, please. We're going to have so much Just fun. like, you have to message, you have to message her and be like, let's hang out. I did. Let's I hang out. already did. Okay, I said, good. Me and Holly Conrad yes. are so excited Perfect. to hang Perfect. out with you and your crew. It was amazing. Oh my God. They the, can do our makeup. The, the, uh, I know. The best part was. I love drag queens. When the Pokemon cosplayer came on, she grabbed one of his Pokeballs. And she was like, I've got your balls in a vice grip. And then she threw them out of his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. That's it amazing. was so good. I, I, that was the highlight of my whole con. I was like, well, it's just downhill from here. It was amazing. Um, the only other better part of the con was I was on a panel about romance with David Gator, which I absolutely did not belong on. I was like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. So I would just like every once in a while try to make like a sassy remark or David would talk about something and I would just like make faces. I would just be like, and people would laugh and I was like, oops, I'm derailing the thread. So, the so thread. it's a forum now. Oh God, <laughs> wow. Wow. My jargon. So David Gator at one point was talking about, um, romances for everyone. He was like, yeah, romances for everyone. And then I was like. You get a romance, you get a romance, you get a romance. Look under your seats. Just and then making out her low hanging fruit jokes. You no, know, David was like, and then everyone laughed because I was a gamer ex. And David was like, does that make me, and I don't remember what he said. And I was like, no, David, I think that makes you Oprah. Oh, yeah. And then yes. everyone like, like, it was like a round of applause. Like, basically it was a standing ovation. And I was like, <laughs> drops mic. I just won the convention, so it was great. I had yeah, a lot of fun. I wish I could have been there. It sounds like it's it was coming a lot back of fun. next year, and I better talk, be at the W. Just saying, I I can't control that. I but know. if we ever do Crab Cat Con, I know <laughs> we won't be, be able to afford the W. <laughs> we can do a Kickstarter. We're we'll doing it in a vacant field in like Culver City. <laughs> Listeners, viewers, would you like to see a Crab Cat Con? Would you go? What should it cover? Let us know in the comments or tweet at us at, at Jessica Mears and at Holly Conrad. Yes. Crab Cat Con has to happen. I know. It has to. It would it be the best be con like ever. The con of misfit toys. Like everyone who feels like a loser and doesn't feel cool and accepted can come. And then we won't have any cool panelists. So we'll probably get like five people because everyone will be like, I don't want to go to like basic, no, no, cra- basically no. social anxiety cra- no, convention. Cra- Crab Cat Con would just be about inclusiveness and not about, like it would be about including everyone and not being like, oh, well, you're not this or you're not that. It'd be about like, you know. Yes, it's, like, it's the misfit convention. Yes, the, it, yes, it'd be about all of everyone that's like forgotten. It's like the parade of misfit toys. That's our convention. Yes, exactly. That's what I want. That's the convention that I want to have so that we can just be like, here's a safe place to <laughs> just be a reject and be proud. Yeah, exactly. It. And where no one says nerd liberties ever. No. No one ever says that. No. Nope. It's a bad word. That is a bad word. It's a bad word. And I don't just mean it's like a poor choice of it's language. It's a bad word. It's a naughty word. It's a naughty word. <laughs> it's a reject If you say word. that, you should feel bad about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. You, you, should get a nun like just popping a out nun? of the woodwork, just like giving you like a slap on the hand. Yes. And just being like, no, we yeah. don't use that language in here. It's true. It's going to switch you good. So I got a lot of requests uh, because at San Diego Comic Con, I was on a panel called The Most Dangerous Woman of Comic Con, and they asked us what makes you the most nerdy. And I think they were expecting like, oh, X Men or I don't know. But they asked me the same thing on my panel. What did you say? I said, I said that I, I mean, nerdy, I guess it'd be in my term would be something like passionate and like really sort of borderline insane. Okay, and whatever. Like, I said that I ripped all the dialogue from Baldur's Gate and also all the different dialogue trees so that I could see every single iteration of the game and I pulled it all out and read it like a novel. Um, okay, but still that, <laughs> that is like when you think of nerdy. That still kind of fits in the realm of like video games, 
I guess. movies, comics. I guess, but I never thought, I guess, like, in today's term, it would be nerdy, but when I was a kid, it was just me having a good time. So. But no one expected my answer. I basically said that I'm the most nerdy when I am freaking out about dead things. And oh yes, I mean, no one. Because that's not like nerdy. Like when people like no, it you're is just incredibly nerdy for me. But like if I said that, most people would not think that that's like. Well, nerdy. I'm. It, I. I mean, I get it. But like, I'm nerdy. Like, nerdy okay, about I don't birds. care. We're not trying to justify that. No, yes, I'm just yes, saying. Like, yes, it's like how I am with if birds. If your answer had been, I'm the most nerdy when I'm following the Audubon Society, <laughs> I would have been like, yeah, exactly. Like that's yes. a super weird thing that no one expected. So I talked about how how I was super nerdy about like archaeology and finding things that I know someone dead used to own mm -hmm. and that I was super into osteology and that my most recent purchase of like a substantial amount of money was a resin casted seven month old fetus skull yeah. and so people started asking me about it and so I figured I would bring it on the show to show everyone I was, the bell jar is great. So I know. So this is my fetus skull. It no fetuses were harmed in making this skull except for it's the as one big that as this cupcake. except for the one that um, <laughs> it was casted from. But I assume something happened to it. But it's okay. Um, and this is this is a medical specimen, so it's not. It, it was obtained ethically. And the cool thing about this that I think is just. I guess a really good metaphor for life is that um, baby skulls and elderly skulls look almost identical. Like if it weren't for the size difference, if you like scaled them down and made them the same size, it would almost be impossible to differentiate if you couldn't see like the top because the top's soft. I don't I don't know if you know this, but when they talk about the soft spot on babies' heads, it's literally because the uh, skull is has different bones and they don't fuse until like, the baby is about two years old just because the um, pelvis in a woman is not the pelvic girdle is not big enough for like an actual fused skull to come out so when it goes into labor it has to be able to compress um, because evolution is awesome and so yeah so you can you can see it's teeny little jaw and that's what the elderly like their jaws kind of um start disintegrating and so babies and little people look the same so we kind of come from somewhere we go around and then we all start start off where um, we ended i have been reading a lot of uh, lovecraft recently mm -hmm. because i read i read like the call of cthulhu when i was a little kid and i was mm -hmm. like yeah it was whatever i didn't understand it because i was like way too young to be reading that it's like when i when i read jane eyre in the second yeah year. and i was like this i don't i don't know so i've been reading it again because i like i had i've had some time and i've just been reading it and like it's amazing i had never read like uh the dun i think it's the dunwich horror i never read um the Mountains of Madness, like, I, and they're all, like, they're all so good. And I had, was thinking about uh, Pacific Rim and Guillermo del Toro and how he's a huge fan of Lovecraft. And I was like, you know what, I've never really, like, thoroughly sat down and, like, read these again since I was, like, too young to understand and just thought that they were, like, magical Harry Potter books, which yeah. they were not. But, no, no. <laughs> no they're, and they're amazing. And there's a lot, I mean, it, they're so fucked up. It's so good. Like, they're just, like, every turn of the book is, like, something disgusting and messed up. And I, I literally love every single part of it and it reminds me of how it talks about how like the the old ones and the old gods and everything like how humanity was just like a disgusting accident and life is like a gross accident of these like elder things and I'm like yeah I like that I like that way of thinking about mortality in our universe is that there's these things out there that are just so like massive and disgusting and so like unfathomable to our human minds that we can't even understand it. And that's, that's what true. this is. That's what life is. You start as that you come out as this disgusting, horrible piece of meat and you die as this disgusting, horrible piece of meat because we're just walking meat sacks. Yeah. Basically walking meat sacks. But it's you guys should men, read yeah. men who have two walking meats. It's yeah, it's true. They've got there's a lot of I'm just gonna say there are a lot of foul like phallic things in in Lovecraft's work. It's like all tentacles. But regardless, you should definitely like all of you haven't read 
any of those stories. You should definitely read them. They're great. Yeah, and the amazing. The imagery is amazing, and I am so I'm so sad that I hadn't really like gotten to read them thoroughly before, and I just like browsed them when I was too young. But now I'm reading them again, and uh, for my winter clothes, I bought myself a Miskatonic University sweatshirt. So sweet, it's pretty great. Sweet. Speaking of our. Uh, spirit guide who doesn't know he's our spirit guide Guillermo del Toro yes. <laughs> I have a funny story to share from uh, so oh my god okay so to backtrack a little bit David Gator who is the lead writer for the Dragon Age series he's been working on at Bioware since Baldur's Gate 2 and he's super oh, <laughs> there's my creepy story about I used to creep on David Gator because he wrote my favorite romance when I was a kid of Valen Shadow Breath from Neverwinter Nights 2, which was actually my first costume ever. It was a crossplay of that character. It's really embarrassing. Before you knew what crossplay was. Before I knew what crossplay was, I just wanted to be the character because I was obsessed with the character. You wanted to so, like do him. It was and just be like him. it was all kinds of weird. But thanks, David Gator, for being awesome and not creeped out when I told you that. You're a great guy. You wanted to have sex with Valen and then like, peel I'm off sorry. his skin and wear him. Pretty much. So it's David not, came to San Francisco and San Francisco is my city. Like if I feel a kindred connection to any city that's not Colonial Williamsburg, because I can show you everything there. Uh-huh. But aside from Colonial Williamsburg, Tomorrow. which I also nerd out about a lot. It's like me in Edinburgh. Yeah. 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 I nerd but out about Edinburgh. San Francisco is my city. I know all the cool things. And so I was super excited to show David everything cool. Um, the night I got in, I had just spent the day in Oakland visiting my professors and um, going vintage shopping. Uh, oh, shoot. I didn't show you my spoils. Yes. I'll do it next week. And um, my haul. And so I got back and I checked in my hotel and I was like, hey, David, where are you? I texted him and he was like, um, I'm across the street at this bar. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I was like, oh, there's a tapas bar. Maybe he's over there. No, he was, <laughs> he was at Chevy's. <laughs> Chevy's, the tax max know why, like chain I don't know why, but somewhere, somehow, I hear Chad being like, Chevy's not bad. <laughs> Chevy, Chad from Polaris. <laughs> Chad. Yeah, Chad from uh, my day job at Polaris. You guys are from there. Meeting. Chevy's not You guys bad. are watching this and you know Chad. Like, just like, put that connection together. Somewhere Chad's like, Chevy's isn't so bad, guys. It's not so bad. Poor Chad. And <laughs> poor David Gator. So, he, I was like, all right, fine. I'll, I'll have some, like, totally totally prefabricated, super sterile margaritas from a chain restaurant but tomorrow night we're gonna have super fun um tomorrow then the next night i got us reservations at this amazing italian restaurant that i love and then i was going to take david to my favorite dive bar in san francisco um buckshot which i've taken you to yeah i've been there it's like it's got ski ball and it's got watermelon infused vodka and when you order it they literally just give you this much of straight vodka yeah i was i was like can you cut this or something <laughs> yeah and uh, there's pool and there's taxidermy and there's a uh taxidermy there's taxidermy bear. guys if you have a taxidermy bear jessica and i will be there there's a taxidermy bear that's also the like standing behind the DJ turntable. So it's amazing. And it's not too loud. So I was like, we'll go to my amazing Italian restaurant, then we'll go to Buckshot. Um, and David was like, I don't want to wait for a cab. <laughs> so we walked like five blocks to this place that the concierge recommended him of this Mexican place, which was good, but I was like, this is way too expensive for Mexican food that like they put cactus in it. And we're like, ooh. It's fancy, and I was like, okay, we could have gotten way better Mexican food, for like <laughs> five bucks, um, in the mission, but whatever. So then I was like, okay, cool. Where do you guys want to go? My my best friends Casey and Garen are gonna meet us, and like we're gonna do something awesome. Like maybe we can go to Harry Dented's Starlight Room because it's kitschy and funny, and we can see some forty year old have her bachelorette party. <laughs> and guess where we ended up? Chubby's. Chubby's. <laughs> For the second night in a row. Um, and then we closed Chubby's out. And closed Chubby's closed out. Closed out Chubby's. Closed us out and Chubby's. one other patron. It was us and one other patron. 
Well, the Bahama was- Mamas were good, but it was not what I expected. But we went up to my hotel room and played Cards Against Humanity, and then I felt like a little better. And David had a lot of fun, which I suppose was the overall purpose anyway. So then after David left, um, I was reminiscing about life with Casey, who was one of our oldest friends and who I actually dated for four years um, before uh, he and I decided that that was not what he wanted to be with, which is vaginas. (laughs) Um, It's cool. I had two other boyfriends who ended up being gay, so I clearly have a type. Um, But so we were reminiscing in case it was like, oh, is, is your cat Sugar and Morris still alive? And I was like, no, Morris died. And Sugar actually died before that. Don't you remember? It was super tragic. And he was like, no, I don't. And I was like, oh, let me tell you a story. How did he not remember? This is what happened. How no, but how did he not remember? I don't know. That's this, crazy. This did he guys, like lose some this is what lose happened. some time? This is what happened to my cat sugar. Why are you telling the story? It's so sad. It, no, can we it, save it for next no, time? No, it leads somewhere. So this is my story about my cat sugar. Um I came home from college one day and I was super depressed because I chose my boyfriend over my cat to take to college with me. Um, And so I hadn't seen her in like two years. And I came home and the day after I came home and I'd had a really like totally upsetting few weeks and I was like, yeah, I just want to come home and eat some Southern food and, and curl up with my cat who is a respectable 10 years old. So she is... She is getting up there, but she's, you know, she's just a little, she's a little genteel lady. The next morning, she walks up to me and makes this, like, chattering noise and is holding her paw up. And basically, like, her nose is getting purple and purple and purpler. And then she collapses, and we take her to the hospital. We left her overnight, and then the next morning, I was, like, super nauseous and upset and we got there as soon as it opened and she had died an hour earlier. So I was upset because she had died alone and um, I don't handle that stuff very well. And so I was really upset and it was so tragic. I still like kind of get PTSD about it. But so my mom, the like, the, um, you know, ever supportive, totally thoughtful woman that she was, was like, Chancy. I'm going to give you a few Ativans so you can go to Lullaby Land. And then when you wake up, why don't we watch a, why don't we watch a movie? And some people hoard newspapers and crazy things so that they can't, you know, navigate through their house. But my mother is obsessed with appearances, so our house was always spotless, but no one was allowed to come over because she was afraid it was too dirty. But she also hoarded movies. So I have just like a million movies. And so... Including uh, The Country Bear Jamboree. Yeah, for no reason. Like, some stupid movies that I don't know. But my mom has really good taste in movies. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go to Lullaby Land for, like, ten hours. And when I wake up, we'll watch a nice, nice, cheerful movie. And so I, I, I woke up, and she was like, Jesse, I went to Walmart, and I found this movie on sale. And... It's really good. I watched it while you were sleeping, and I know how much you love Guillermo del Toro. So, and I love him too. He's so thoughtful about just about his philosophy, and so I thought we could watch this movie together. Uh, so I, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I would like to just escape into a fantasy land for a little while. So she pops it in, and she was like, I think this will make you feel better about sugar. This movie is called Pan's Labyrinth. (laughs) And the little fawn is just so cute. I think you'll love the little fawn. And so we're watching it and obviously. (laughs) You've seen Pan's Labyrinth. It's not a good movie to watch out here coping with death. No, it's not. No, not at all. (laughs) So at the end, I was I literally was about to have a panic attack. Like I thought I was going to die. I thought my heart was I do was love that movie though. No, it's amazing, but I haven't been able to watch it since because it's I I'm pretty sure I would go It's a hard movie to watch. I mean it's a hard like not it's a it's an amazing movie, but it's a hard movie to watch if you're down, I yeah. guess. You have to really like be in the mood for some art, not in the mood to like cheer yourself up with a movie. Yeah, it um it's the same kind of thing where you go into an art gallery and you don't really want unless you're in the specific mood yeah. to watch like videos of like people like 
getting razor blades close to their yeah. faces. Like, yeah, that yeah. takes a certain mood to yeah. appreciate that. So I told Casey this this story, and, and I was like, actually, I thought, I, I leaned over to Holly when we were watching Pacific Rim, and I was like, oh my god, I bet, I bet um, Rinko's little, the shoe, the... Yeah, Mako? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, I think that's a kid, I think that's actually the actress's name, whatever, I, I don't care. It's fine. Um, I think, so... She was holding this little red shoe, and I was like, oh, my God, It's I'm sure that's in there as, like, a nod to Pan's Labyrinth. So I was telling Casey and Garen this story, and it's, like, it's like 2 a.m. in my hotel room. And I was like, oh, my God, and I know, and I just get in those, those little red shoes, those little red shoes. And it was just, and then they, they were, like, laughing because at this point it's enough distance. And then so we all just started going, the little red shoes, and we are so shrill. And then all of a sudden we heard, oh, no. And I was like, oh. So Who I got it. It was the person next door, oh. like banging on the wall. Oh. I was like, "Oops!" Someone's not having fun at a convention. I then. just imagine they were like, lo- they were trying to sleep, and all this. They're just hearing. Oh my god! So yeah, that's pretty. Oh wow. Yeah, but I guess I guess that's as like re- like loud and and you know rowdy as the convention got, other than um, the fabulous drag queen. So it was a it was a good weekend all in all. I, I brought some presents home for Holly. I uh, brought my DS and totally forgot to bring to the convention, so I got no street passes. <laughs> and yeah, it was good. It was a good time. It's good. Um, it's I it's stayed at home and painted and uh, uh, read Lovecraft books. That's good. That's important. You yeah. have like a I'm a, a creep, everyone. A fireside weekend yeah. and I am a creep. Self. I'm a creep. Reflection. And introspection. Yep. It's important. I need to be a creep sometimes because I need to go back to my roots. Well, I had a fabulous time with fabulous people. And I just want to reiterate, I don't think that this is... I don't think this is bragging because it's happened so many times that I... It's empirical evidence for the truth that this is. Drag queens love me. They just do. I guess because I can get into this crazy... And it's just like... um, the gays love my mother. We accidentally went to um, Gay Day at Disneyland once, and my mom somehow made friends with everyone. She was like, oh, y'all are just so happy, and y'all should just get married. What's the world oh coming to? And then I swear to God, if they had all, like, they could have just carried her. I'm pretty <laughs> sure she would be, like, BFF I've, with Anderson Cooper. Oh, my God. I love Anderson Cooper. Yeah. I have, I mean, I have always loved the gay community. And I think that they are a lot of fun, and I would rather hang out with them most of the time because they're having a good time. Well, and the next fun gay convention is BentCon in November in Burbank, so we're going to be there for sure. I've already decided. I just want to come what are we gonna cosplay with like, a as? satchel of like confetti and just be like, you get a romance, you oh my get a God. romance. We have look to under your me. seats. Low hanging fruit, of Jessica. What should we cosplay as? Well, we should not. We shouldn't cosplay at all. We should cross dress. Oh yes, of course. We should cross dress. One time, I think I want to. I think I want to cosplay as a drag queen. Okay. Be so meta. I mean, we, a drag queen. Friend. I mean, I like that we we already cross dressed as. Are we allowed to talk? No, about we're that? not. Oh, well, you guys. Cross dress was fun. If you watch our TV show on Sci Fi, that's. In like actually just actually a few like days. Actually, a few days. August. Ah! <laughs> oh my God! Anyone who was wearing headphones when they were just <laughs> listening, like just threw them across. I'm sorry. The room and but you, that is you. that's the only way that I can represent how I feel about how nervous I am. I'm not nervous. Video. It's a thing. It existed. It was fun. Um, thanks for the memories. Yeah. But if you watch that, um, a few episodes in, you will maybe see us cross dressing. Maybe if that didn't like make the editing room floor maybe but we'll see so it's good times um i feel like i feel like that's all i have to say you had a lot of stories this week yeah i'm sorry next time you should just do all the talking and i don't know i mean i didn't do anything exciting except for paint and it's exciting craft so you you and i helped hillary i helped hillary you reached a milestone in your life where you were not very comfortable um painting and photoshop and you overcame 
your fears and you did it. It's true. I still think I'm terrible, but maybe... Well, everyone kind of thinks yeah. they're terrible. At the end of the that day, sure I did it. I worked really hard, and I will only get better. And one of these days, it will pay off. So, there wow. you go. Wow. You have absolutely drank the reality TV Kool-Aid. At the end of the day, it was all worth okay. it, and someday you know what? It would if, pay if off. It, nice sound bite. If it if it brainwashed me to be a little bit more positive, more than any therapist ever could, then I think that's okay. Sound bites, sound bites. Well, that's all for this week. Um, <laughs> wait, wait. Jessica's favorite sound bite. I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> See, that's why drag queens love me. It's true. <laughs> no, they come full circle. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Just like this fetus yeah coming anyway make sure to like and subscribe subscribe and follow us on twitter at holly conrad and at jessica marizan and, and we'll see you next time we'll see you next time and eventually we will be doing more new stuff so stay tuned to crab cat is go on youtube yes everyone